has a story. Stories have power. They help us understand. Jessup's Journal is a collection of powerful, positive, and inspirational stories. It's time for Jessup's Journal. Hi, I'm Doug Jessup. Welcome to Jessup's Journal, where we share powerful, positive, and inspirational stories. Today, we're delving into love stories. First up is a bank executive that shows a story of love and acceptance through trials. I've just taken on um, the mantra or the belief that people are doing the best they can in life with the cards that life has, been, has dealt them and to just give each other a break and, and just accept that we're, we're imperfect creatures and that, we, um, and that we're just doing the best we can to get through this thing called life. Kimberly Duncan shares a positive message of lessons she learned from her mother. She taught me something that was really important in my life. What's that? She taught me to, that nothing is impossible. Okay. Nothing's impossible. Everyone has a story. Stories have power. Objects can have inspirational stories, and yeah, love stories as well. Their treasures remembered. In this episode of Jessup's Jukebox, I have country music star Chris Peterson. I want a woman, I want a woman that's four-wheel drive. Got a pickup truck that's nicer than mine. And if it breaks down, she'll fix it up with baling twine. I want a woman that's four-wheel drive. So if you find one, boys, keep me in mind. But first, Terry Grant. We gotta, you know, make you official and okay. have you sign in oh. the book. It's interesting when you look at, at the way that that our childhoods are and everything like that. Um, was there somebody that believed in you before you believed in you? Uh, I don't think any of us get to where we are today without people believing in us, mm -hmm. um, mentoring us, taking taking um, a notice of us and, and really taking us under their wing. Um, I had a, a, a few people. Um, I, uh, I grew up in a, an amazing family that uh, the parents, my parents were very supportive of me um, and every, everything we did. Um, in fact, I had a quite a, actually a unique childhood. Um, my parents were some of the very first multi-level marketing, or we call really? them MLM for short here in Utah. We all okay. kind of know what that means, or yeah. direct selling people. Uh -huh. Here in the state of Utah, when I was 11 years old, hmm. um, my parents joined Amway Corporation. Oh, wow. And they were told that you could not grow that kind of a business here in Utah, that our culture just didn't support it. People had tried it and failed at it. Hmm. My parents did not listen. They went on to build a very <laughs> successful Amway business. Mm -hmm. um, so as a, as a from an 11 year old on, I was um, really put in the spotlight. I, th we'd have Grant family rallies and reunions. <laughs> uh, I would, myself and my brothers, I was the oldest of, of four boys, we would speak in front of thousands of people. Really? Um, in fact, I spoke at the Superdome at one time. Wow. Um, just full of people. So uh, I grew up kind of in the spotlight. I ran seminars for, for teenagers of Amway building families to, tell, to teach them how they could help their parents grow their business. But I've got to tell you, if, if there's one person I can point to that believed in me before I believed in me is my wife. Really? We were married young, okay. 22 years old. Oh, heck yeah. That sounds familiar. still, still yeah. needed a lot of growing up to do. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really know who I was or how I was going to find my way in the world. And we, uh, very shortly after we were married here in Utah, we moved to Denver, Colorado, which started an amazing 20-year journey, um, working in five states and two countries um, before we moved back to Utah. And in every turn, she was so supportive and made me stretch mm -hmm. beyond what I, my comfort zone was and really was my rock and my foundation and my confidant um, that really um, 
believed in anything I, I did was, was the right thing. Where did you guys meet? We met at the old ZCMI stores for those <laughs> old Utah people. Uh -huh. um, our first date was New Year's Eve and uh, never looked back. My wife and I were dirt poor, just oh, yeah. newly married sure. out in Denver. She was working as a receptionist uh, um, at a trucking company. And so I started looking the, in the Denver Post for a job, and uh, lo and behold, there was an opportunity for a peak time teller at Central Bank of Denver, which oh, yeah. uh, just meant during the hours where most people wanted to come in and do their banking, I would go in and, and help out. And so that's how I started my banking career, yeah. was as a teller at Central Bank. Back then, um, ATMs had just been introduced. Wow. Um, nobody wanted to use a machine. Right. They wanted to stand in line for 15, 20 minutes to talk to their teller mm -hmm. because they had a relationship. And we'd actually have a competition on the teller line. Who could send the most people down <laughs> to get a demonstration <laughs> on this machine? You know, yeah. recently, Doug, I, I was joking with one of our area retail leaders at Key and said, uh, you know, we need to have a demonstration on how to deal with a real person to do banking today. Mm -hmm. Because, boy, has it shifted oh, boy. so far from not wanting to use a machine, wanting to use a person, to now everybody uses their mobile devices and computers to do online banking. Right. I understand you had a slightly well-known neighbor. <laughs> this is true. Um, so uh, I lived in a place called uh, Freehold, New Jersey, and uh, Bruce Springsteen was uh, one of our our neighbors and uh, Bruce, you know, he, he was really well known for just being a part of the community. Mm -hmm. I went to the same barber he did for yeah, uh, growing up. Uh -huh. um, he would come and go to high school events. Um, and I saw him at a PTA meeting one time and I finally told my wife, I'm going to go over and shake his hand. And my wife said, no, 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 he is here for his child. Do not bother him at a PTA meeting. Yeah. And I was like, no. I love Bruce Springsteen. The He's boss. the boss. Yeah. He's the boss. I've got to go. So I went over and I, I spoke with him and, and I did not ask him for his autograph. I didn't okay. go that far, but okay. I just shook his hand and just let him know how much his music meant to me and yeah. so many others. Uh, in fact, one of the, uh, I remember uh, one of our first concerts together uh, as a husband and wife was in Denver when he came through really? with the Born in the USA tour. Oh, and um, and how much we enjoyed that concert. So I just we just chatted for a few. Just a down to earth guy. Just just very personable. Well, we've gotten to uh, shall we say a, a certain certain age uh, uh, that we we kind of have a refining fire, and you kind of go through things. Take me back. Was it two years ago? Two years ago. Yeah. In July of 2017, we were driving to our cabin, and uh, the back tire exploded on our truck, um, literally exploded. Witnesses say that it picked the back of us up. And um, if, if you know outside of Scipio, Utah, there's two lanes south and two lanes north on I-15 yep. and uh, a sloped median in between. And yes. my front tire hit that sloped median um, with our, our blowout of our tire and we immediately rolled. Um, oh I came out you know, with a few crack bones and, and uh, bruises and stitches. But my poor wife was beat up pretty, pretty bad. And um, in fact, uh, she has never, she has never um, recovered from that. She's still um, never, never regained consciousness. So she's currently today, two years later, in a, a vegetative, minimally conscious state. Um, about a year and a half ago, we brought her home to, to our home and we adapted our home for her to, to make sure um, that she was as comfortable and felt as loved as possible. Um, but, but you know, um, that refiner's fire that you talk about, those pivotal times in your life, um, everything has really changed from the way I view others. Maybe I should give you an example. Okay. Um, rightly or wrongly, bankers are taught to judge. Yeah. We need to make decisions on who is bankable, creditworthy, whatever cliche name you want to put to it. But okay. we're, we're, we're trained and taught that one of the first credit criteria is the individual. So we want to make sure of the character of those individuals. And so we a lot of times make judgments on, on individuals. I think I judged a little bit too much because um, I guess because of the accident and people knowing my circumstances, they felt I was a bit of a safe zone mm. where they could come 
and tell me what's going on in their own personal lives because now I'm part of that club, a club that nobody wants to be a part of, yeah. but I'm a part of it with tragedy, with family members or others. I have had so many people come up and people I respect, people that I would have no clue what's going on in their personal lives that I knew from the professional level, tell me about circumstances in their lives. And it really opened my eyes that, you know what, we have no idea what other people are dealing with and sometimes we judge a little bit too quick but we don't know what else they're dealing with what other balls they have in the air that they have to ha keep in the air and so I've just taken on um, the mantra or the belief that people are doing the best they can in life with the cards that life has, been, has dealt them and to just give each other a break and, and just accept that we're, we're imperfect creatures and that, we, um, and that we're just doing the best we can to get through this thing called life. Thank you very much for sharing. Thanks for coming on to Jessica. Oh, Sternal. it's been, been my pleasure. It's just, uh, I, I really appreciate what you are doing with, with Jessup's Journal and the other things that you're doing here in our community, bringing out the good of what, what people are doing, what nonprofits are doing, and others to help others. You're, you're really uh, an amazing part of our, our community, and I thank you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. One of my favorite inspirational quotes is from Audrey Hepburn. She said, to plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow. Stories can be told through music, even love songs. Chris Peterson has a love song in Jessup's jukebox. A little birdie tells me that Chris Peterson here is ram tough, right? Yeah. Well, I'm pretty darn sure that this next song defines four-wheel drive in a slightly different way. Hint, there's a woman right over there I'm pretty sure he's singing to her. Yeah, them cowboy boots, they ain't right, they fit her. Better than Cinderella's glass slipper, and she cuss your buddies, and she quote the Bible. She's a real life, real tree, camouflage my hood. I want a woman on this four wheel drive. The kind is tough enough to keep me in line, but she's pretty as a pearl handle 45. I want a woman that's four wheel drive. Now she can chop wood, cinch a saddle. If you're ever up a creek, she can whittle out a paddle. When she holds that trigger, you bet she's gonna kill it. And go and fry it up in a cast iron skillet. I want a woman that's four wheel drive. Eat a fresh tomato straight off the vine. And then shoot me down with them 12 gauge eyes. I want a woman that's four wheel drive. I want a woman that's four-wheel drive, a little mud on the fender, but she still shines with that well-built bumper looking good from behind. I want a woman, I want a woman, I want a woman that's four-wheel drive, got a pickup truck that's nicer than mine, and if it breaks down, she'll fix it up with baling twine. I want a woman that's four-wheel drive, so... If you find one, boys, keep me in mind, cause I want a woman that's four-wheel drive.
my hats have a story. This was actually my first custom hat. I got it when I helped a startup company become profitable. It's called The Profit, hence the name. You never quite know what kind of impact you're gonna have on another person. Kimberly Duncan's mother had a very positive impact on her. And you know what? I'm positive that she is paying it forward. What kind of upbringing did your mother have by chance? Hers was a very different up upbringing. Um, my mom, she was the oldest of seven kids. Okay. And um, my grandma, my grandma Betty, mm -hmm. she um, actually, she, when she was growing up, all she wanted to do was have kids. Grandma That's, Betty. Yes, Grandma okay. Betty. All she wanted to do was have, have kids and have fun. Okay, how many kids did she end up having? She had seven children. Okay, that's a bunch of kids, yeah. And at age 21, she had six. Oh my. 21 had six children. Wow. Um, she, she had uh, quite a life. Yeah. And one of the things I remember most about my grandma, she, she told us lots of stories. Mm -hmm. um, but something that was really a tender story, really, really tender story, is um, when she was a young mother, mm -hmm. had six children, okay. and she had um, uh, my uh, little um, aunt at that time, she was nine months old, and she drowned in the bathtub. Oh. And that really um, was a, of course, pivotal moment, it, moment sure. in the family's life. And my grandma really struggled, obviously. Yeah. And my mom ended up, from that experience, just becoming like the, the mom of the family. She's only you know, six years old at the time, mm -hmm. and my grandma just doesn't have it about herself to take care of the family yeah. after having the baby die. And so my mom really took over that in, in their life. And um, my mom, my mom is an amazing mother, and she went through a lot of really tough, tough times in her mm -hmm. life. And she made a commitment to herself that she would give her kids a totally different life than what she had. Yeah. And so that was her commitment in life, and, and she gave us a really amazing life. My parents, I just, I honor them. Who believed in you before mm -hmm. you believed in you? My mom. Your mom. My mom, yeah. yeah. My mom was, um, always, uh, well, she taught me something that was really important in my life. What's that? Uh, she taught me to, that nothing is impossible. Okay. Nothing's impossible. Okay. And um, so the story I have to share that really uh, shares that the most is when we were little, my mom had a, a beauty salon okay. in her home and she worked part time in the house and, and that was, so we got to be with our mom. We did, yeah. you know, we, nice. which was awesome. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, w it was fun growing up because um, my mom's clients, we called them the ladies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the ladies okay, were the coming ladies. over. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Or the ladies coming, you know, and we, we ended up having these relationships with all these incredible women that would come into our house and they would become kind of like, you know, family to us. Well, my mom, something that she told my sister and I, I, I remember we were sitting in a movie theater and at the very end of the movie, movie, you know how the credits come mm -hmm. up? Yep. And she would always point out the hairstylist <laughs> in the there credits. Okay. Yes. And she said, one day, my name will be there. Really? Yes. And here she is, this cute little mom in her uh -huh. house, have uh -huh. a part-time in yeah. a home salon. Yeah. How is my mom ever going to be in the credits of a movie? Yeah. So this was something that we were little and we just believed that story about my mom. Right. And it was true to us that she would mm -hmm. be in the credits one day. Well, a few years go by. I'm now about 18 years old, mm -hmm. and my mom gets a phone call. And really? yes, my no. mom gets a phone call. Serious? Yes, I'm serious. Oh, wow. And my friend, a really good friend of ours, had called and said, um, there's a really important person that had their ha hairstylist is not available. Okay. And you're amazing. Would you be available? Okay. And so my mom, of course, she's like, um, yes, I will do that. Uh -huh. And so uh, she ends up going and, and um, being this stylist and this particular celebrity. Uh -huh. She and she's now been her stylist for over 30 years. Really? Yeah. 
I can so, tell you who it is. So she got in the credits. She got in the credits. Okay. She's traveled all over the world with this person. Okay. Who, yes. who, who do tell? It's Marie Osmond. Serious? Yes. Oh, that's fun. Yes. So she's she's so, Marie Osmond's stylist. Well, buddy doll. Is that awesome? Jeez, I'm, I'm interviewing the the daughter <laughs> of a Marie Osmond's stylist. Wow. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, that's fun. So we've had, the, Marie is an amazing woman, and yeah. I ha I've had the opportunity to, to get to know her, and she is a very special woman. Huh. And my mom and her have a just incredible relationship. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, that's an impossible dream. You right. know, here you are in a, in a home salon, with par working part-time, and to have that dream of being in the credits, and then yeah. here my mom is now living that dream, you know? Wow. So the question is, did your mom remember to, like her, her, her mother, did she remember to have fun? Oh, okay, so yes. Well, can I tell you about my grandma first? Sure, though? I'd love okay. to. So my grandma, she, she lived a life of just fun. I, because my mom was this, a stylist, and, and mm -hmm. occasionally my mom would need to have me babysat by my grandma. Okay. And so my grandma and I had a really special bond. Oh, yeah. And super good connection. I mean, I, she was a big part of my life as I grew up. And in fact, before I was 16, mm -hmm. my grandma, we would be driving down the road and she would pull over and then, and then she'd say, get out. I'm like, what am I doing? And then she'd get out of the car and she'd get in the passenger seat and she'd just get in the, get in the driver's seat. I'm like, why grandma? And she's, you're driving. There you go. <laughs> just don't tell your mom, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly, <laughs> don't <laughs> tell anybody. Yeah. Uh -huh. But she taught me how to drive. Sweet. And she, we did the craziest things. You know how when it's raining and the, there's puddles in the parking lot? Uh -huh. Well, she would take all of us kids, pa pack us in, in her, those station wagons, you know? Mm -hmm. The ones where you can sit at the, you used to mm -hmm. sit at the back and you used to oh, look yes, out. Oh, uh, yes, we, had, we <laughs> had one too. Yeah. With, the, with the wood paneling on oh, the yeah. side, mm -hmm. yeah. So we, we would get in the station wagon and all the kids would pile in and if it rained, we'd be straight going straight to the um, grocery store. Uh -huh. And we would be barreling through those, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh -huh. she loved it. Oh, yeah. And then she would stop, and then she'd have us all get out, and then we would play in this dirty, muddy, gross mm -hmm. walk. Oh, yeah. with, yeah. you know. My grandson <laughs> loves to do the same thing. Like, rush, rush, rush. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. And she would say, it's just water, you know? Now, um, being older, I'm like, Grandma, it was water with gas and oil and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dirt. That's, but that's what baths we, and showers are for. Exactly. It's okay. We had fun. You've got a funky little business card. Yes, and I I'm going to give you a hard time. On this. <laughs> I know you are. Okay. I know exactly what you're going to tell me. So, <laughs> Kim Duncan. Yes. What is the title on your business card? It says Queen of the Kingdom. Okay. Yes. And do I know explain. it's. There's got to be a story behind of, that. I know it's pretty bold to no, have it's that. It's okay. Yeah. But I believe that every woman deserves to be the queen of her kingdom. Yeah. Totally agree. And so that's what I do in my life is, you know, I've had, I've had some tough times in my life, Doug. It's been, there's some, been some really tough times, times when I didn't even want to get out of, bed, out of mm -hmm. my bed. I, I, I was literally scared of life. I, I didn't like myself. Mm. In fact, I was, I was very overweight and I really just didn't like me. Um, my husband and I were both overweight at the time mm -hmm. and we went through a really dark, dark time in our life. We were married but we didn't have a lot of the, um, we were emotionally do, you know, just broken. Mm -hmm. uh, physically, we felt broken. Financially, we were broken. And our relationship was there, but it, it, was, it was tough. Okay. And through that um, experience, I, I learned a lot about myself. Um, we we um, began to learn some uh, techniques that, helped us to change our mindset okay. and and it was really hard and it took some years for me mm -hmm. to change my mindset about who I am and what I'm doing and why I'm why I'm here on this planet and through that time I realized as I started because you know when, when in a place like that it's you're really in I, I was inward thinking mm -hmm. only about me as I began to come out of that fog or numbness I guess mm -hmm. you could say I they're, there's like leaves and they're green and they're on the trees and they're beautiful. And I started to see life in a way I'd never seen it before. Life is never boring. Sometimes you have something I like to call the wonderful world of regret. If you've ever had a tattoo or permanent makeup that you've fallen out of love with, 
the folks at Tattoo Away have come up with a pretty cool system that literally removes the ink out of the skin. Everyone has a story. Stories have power. And sometimes those stories are love stories. Objects with a story are treasures remembered. Have you ever wondered how an object becomes important enough to pass down to the next generation? I have. This treasure's remembered could be about this hat, or it could be about this pocket watch, but it's actually about this ring. Let me go back in time a bit. Many years ago, I went to college at Utah State University, go Aggie Blue. There I met a woman with the most beautiful eyes. I somehow convinced her to be my wife. Years went by. We had great kids and now five incredible grandkids. Recently, my wife and I took a fun cruise to celebrate a big anniversary. We're both history buffs and we found ourselves treasure hunting in Key West, Florida to find something special. Lo and behold, we found a bracelet with a Spanish half real coin from the late 1600s. At the same time, we also found this ring with a coin that appears to have been cut down to make change. My ring's a little younger from the mid 1700s. My wife's a tad older than me, so it seemed to fit. Oh, by the way, this pocket watch is a treasure from my treasure. She gave it to me as a wedding present. I love you, Camille. There's a phrase at my house, don't forget to breathe. Well, clear nasal spray helps wash away the bacteria and helps me breathe better. I think it'll help you breathe better too. So come on, join me, take a deep breath and breathe. Thanks for watching this episode of Jessup's Journal. It's my honor to share 30 minutes of powerful, positive, and inspirational stories every week on TV and worldwide at jessupsjournal.com. Here's the thing I want people to remember. Everyone has a story. Stories have power. And sometimes those stories are love stories. With another entry into Jessup's Journal, I'm Doug Jessup.